Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and it's been a while since I reviewed a Harns knife, and we've got the Harns Caster here today. It's uh, an OS 8 steel blade, G10 handle, bit of a backspacer, right and left deep pocket clip, liner lock style knife. It has uh, a model number of CK6118, and then a couple letters uh, designating what color it is. It comes in black green or orange, and the uh, green version has got a dark gray coated blade. There's also a sibling to this knife, which looks exactly the same on the handle, but has a tanto style blade. And that is the CK6119, and then the letters for the colors. Uh, this knife is uh, sold at a number of different places. I'll have links down below that you can buy this knife if you want to buy it. If you use my links, it helps out my channel a whole lot. And, uh, you know, you can go buy it anywhere you want. But if you do want to support my channel as a way of thanking me for the review, uh, consider using my links below. I would appreciate that very much. This is a full-size folder that uh, is quite comfortable in hand. And I'd like to give you the full review coming at you right now. The first thing I want to say about this knife is it's a good looking knife. Uh, nice handle, nice polished G10 here. Not highly polished, but a bit polished. And, you know, a little bit of chamfering on the edges and milling. Really nice work on that. I like how they recessed a little bit here for the pocket clip to fit on the left side as well. Nice big lanyard hole, good back spacer that's got some jimping on it. And it's a flipper. Uh, you can have a little bit of a hole here so you can also open it using that hole, you know, either on top with your thumb. Uh, some people are good at doing it underneath. I am not. <laughs> Or you can use the flipper. Now the flipper, when I first got this, I just couldn't get it to work uh, smoothly all the way. So if I hold it still and flip the uh, flipper tab, I wouldn't get it to open all the way to the full deployment and locking. And now I can get it there most of the time, but uh, not always. And that's because I took it apart and I, uh, uh, you know, polished the washers a little bit, made sure everything's nice and smooth. We've got uh, phosphor bronze washers in there and a nylon washer. And if you uh, can see inside, I don't know if you can see inside with the light right there. There you go. You can see a little bit of white right in there. That's the big nylon washer. I put in a larger washer than was in there. The washer that was in there had gotten chewed up on the sides. And that sometimes happens from the factory. Uh, it should not have passed quality control. Uh, I have found in the history of Harns knives that the quality control is very good, but on this one, it, not quite there. Uh, but easy enough to solve with washers because those are easy to get and uh, you know to you know make your knife work very well again. So it says Harns on the blade here. I don't really like a big sign on the knife that says what it is. This H here is already a good logo for the knife, so I don't think it needs that. Uh, and here it just says caster and AUS-8, so it's OS-8 steel, which is a decent budget steel. Uh, Rockwell hardness around 58, give or take a little bit, uh, depending on the uh, quality control of the hardening. And we've got a lot of um, generous jimping here, or should I say slightly aggressive jimping there. Your thumb gets on there and it's not moving back and forth. Over extended hard use, your thumb might get a little bit tired. If you can see, if I can get it to focus on my thumb now. There you go. You can see that on my thumb that there's a little bit marks there. And that's just from that little bit of pressure, you know, holding on the knife with my thumb. And, you know, you get that little bit of a path on there. So it's a little more aggressive than it needs to be. But uh, I like it to be a little more aggressive than not aggressive enough because you can always just, you know, sand it down a little bit and make it less aggressive, but it's hard to make them more aggressive without taking a file to it and, you know, spending a lot of hard work. We've got recessed liners, so you can't see the liners because of the G10 there. We've got a little bit of a uh, access of the uh, G10 milled out there so your thumb can sit in there 
very comfortably or up on the jimping, whichever way you want to hold it. And then the inside edges here on the G10, um, I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper to it and just break off that corner a little bit because that corner can get a little bit aggressive on the hand. You know, if you rub your hand across there, it can feel a little bit sharper than most of us would like it to be. So there's a little bit of that you can do there. So that's the general shape. So the blade, we've got a drop point blade with a bit of a swedge there, a saber grind, which is a flat grind that doesn't go all the way to the top. And so it's a nice belly here, straight edge, nice sharpener's troil right there, and then the flipper tab. And the corners are broken on the, not broken as in bad, but the it's chamfered edges on the flipper tab. So good, generous work there to keep the all the edges and everything uh, from being too sharp on the hand. So that's really good. Oh, see, that time I didn't quite get it fully deployed. I'm not as good with my left hand either. I don't know why. I grew up left-handed, and I used to be better with knives on my left hand than I am with my right, but I've used my right hand so much lately that I've gotten better with my right hand with knives than my left. Oh, well, it is what it is. Uh, we've got torque screws for the holes, so that's good. T8 here, and um, I don't remember. I think that's T6 on there and on the pocket clip screws. Pocket clip works very well, totally functional, nice deep carry. Let's demonstrate that. So nice deep carry for that knife. Very, very good. So that's also with the Tanto model. It's the same kind of look to it. Works very well. I like that an awful lot for this knife. The um, pivot is a non free spinning. It's a it's a, a pivot that stays still, so you only have to open it on one end to take it apart. I hate those free spinning pivots, and this one doesn't have that issue. The jimping back here is nice and aggressive, uh, but not overly so. So on the, your reverse grip, you can either do a reverse grip and put your thumb on that jimping for a nice good hold, you know, if you're going to use that kind of motion. If you're going to use a stabbing motion, you can get your thumb around the end of the handle quite easily and use it that way or forward, either way works really well. Pinch grip works no problem at all. Your regular grip, you know, no problem with all the different ways of holding this knife and you can hold it quite comfortably any which way you want. Let's go over all of the dimensions on this knife now. So the cutting edge and the blade length, the G10 to the tip, are the same. 8.7 centimeters, 3.43 inches. So almost three and a half inch blade. That's good. The uh, blade thickness is 3.1 millimeters. That's about 0.122 of an inch. So just over a tenth of an inch. Uh, not quite an eighth. Uh, the blade depth this way is 2.7 centimeters, 1.07 inches. Or 1.06 actually. The thickness of the edge, the steel just behind the grind there, is 0.55 millimeters. That's 0.0217 inches. Just slightly thicker than I prefer a knife like this to be. But with OS 8, I think that's just fine. Helps the edge be very durable. The grind angle on this knife, well, on this side, the, uh, the show side, it's 19.9 degrees. And the target is 20, in my opinion. I like 20 degrees. And on the other side, it's 24.5 degrees. So it's just because of manual sharpening by hand that, uh, well, there's a spinning wheel and they, they sharpen it on the wheel. And muscle memory is just different from one side to the other in the angle. You might feel like you got the same angle, but almost every sharpener gets two different angles that way. But the cutting edge is pretty good from the factory. It cuts quite well. Uh, of course, I'm going to be sharpening it myself as soon as this video is done. Handle length. 12.2 centimeters, 4.8 inches. The grip area on the inside here, 10 centimeters, 3.94 inches. So it fits a large hand. It fits an extra large hand. And of course, people with smaller hands can get comfortable as well. The uh, handle thickness is 1.4 centimeters, 0.55 of an inch. So just over half an inch thick this way. The handle depth this way, right here at this, between these two index finger and middle finger choils right there is 2.65 centimeters. That's 1.04 inches. And the handle depth when the knife is closed and in your pocket, 
that is 3.18 centimeters, one and a quarter inches. And the total length of this knife with the blade deployed is 20.9 inches, centimeters, centimeters, that's 8.23 inches. So basically eight and a quarter inches for this full knife. It weighs 122 grams, which is only 4.35 ounces. And why is it only 4.35 ounces? Well, the inside of it shows no skeletonizing. So the reason is you've got thin liners. So the steel there isn't very thick, but it's plenty strong enough. G10 alone is very strong and uh, it doesn't really need big, thick, strong liners. It does a good job the way it is. I have no doubt at all about the strength of this knife. Um, now, how is the knife generally? Well, I already talked about that the uh, pivot isn't terribly smooth from the factory. At least mine wasn't. It required a little bit of work to get smoothed out. And it can still take a little bit more work. You know, I could be doing this while I'm watching TV for a while longer and get that action a little bit more smooth. Lockup is very good. Lockup, uh, the spot where it locks up on the knife is perfect. There's no blade play side to side, up and down. It's a very good lockup. Uh, blade centering is just slightly off, and this is after I took it apart. I don't remember what it was from the factory. I think it was a little bit closer to centered. Uh, I think the washer that I put in there is just slightly different size than the original was. And that can explain why that the blade centering is just slightly off. The liner lock here, uh, the release tab for it, it's got a nice little chamfer on it. But it's a little bit tricky to get at that release lock. Uh, especially at first I got had a really tough time getting it all the time my thumb would slip over it it's hard to get the grip on it uh, the G10 here is if you're looking straight down I have to turn the knife up a little bit so that you can see the steel for the liner lock release should be taking a little bit more of that G10 off at the factory so you can get your thumb in there a little bit more easily and when I go to you know just chamfer off these edges slightly with some sandpaper. I will also be taking this down ever so slightly to give it a little better access to the release of the liner lock. So if you really like this blade design, those are a couple fixes that you can easily do yourself. And even with the pivot, I know most guys, most guys, uh, very many companies these days are putting in uh, ball bearings in every knife. It doesn't really need it. If you get good washers, you can get some good action on a knife without having washers. And it just takes a tiny little bit of English with your hand, you know, a little bit of a shake. And, you know, it comes out really solid with a good thwack. And, you know, you can also just unlock it, you know, without giving it a good thwack as well. So it's not bad. How much does this knife cost? Well, I got mine through GearBest and GearBest regular price is um, pretty good. I've got prices down below where you can get this knife um, and I don't just have one store down there. So you do want to check out the links down below. Um, at GearBest, the regular price is $35.88 US uh, or $47 Canadian. Uh, about around 31 and a half euros and almost 28 British pounds. Uh, do read the prices down below because uh, there are better prices out there. Gearbest charges a little bit of shipping and some of the other vendors do not. So unique features of this knife. Well, there's nothing terribly unique about this knife. There's nothing that screams, you know, pay attention to me. It's just a well-designed, basic, good knife, uh, reasonable steel, really good handle for what you, um, for the, for this market, for a full size budget knife. I, I really like it an awful lot. And the right and left is a good touch with the pocket clip. It's just a well-designed knife that, you know, I wouldn't mind hanging on to for a long time, but I am willing to sell this if somebody wants to buy this from me, uh, because my funds are very tight and I need to buy more knives to review, don't I? I'll demonstrate a little bit of uh, cutting with this knife. Uh, I've used this knife a fair bit already. There's a little bit of wear to this edge. Of course, I have not sharpened it yet. It does okay. 
And this is after I've cut apart a bunch of uh, cardboard and a bunch of some other stuff. It's working okay. So if you're in the market for one of these knives and you just really like this design, this look, you know, consider getting one of these. If you use my links below, I get a tiny bit of a commission that helps with this channel an awful lot. So thanks very much for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.